Functions and Relations, Lesson 3. Uh, operations with functions. We're going to continue with looking at uh, operations on functions. And last lesson we looked at adding and subtracting, or the sum and difference of two functions. Today we're going to look at the product of two functions. And then Lesson 4 will be the quotient of two functions. So product, meaning two functions are multiplying together. On this first investigation, we're using the same two functions from the last lesson, and you'll notice the table is the same. And they are asking us to calculate fg of x. Now, if you'll recall from the notes on lesson two, fg of x is the same as f of x times g of x. And I'm just writing them next to each other, which means they're multiplied together. Um, so, essentially, what we want to do is take the y value from f of x and the y value from g of x and multiply them together. So, that means for the first um, point, we would have f of x, the y value is negative 7, times g of x, the y value is negative 7 as well. Negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. Okay, so you guys go ahead and fill in the rest of the table, and I will do that as well. Pause your video, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we have our table filled in. Check your numbers against the numbers I have. Make sure we're on the same page in that regards. Okay, so there's our numbers. Some of them kind of big, 49. I don't think that's going to fit on our graph. Okay, let's look at part B. Plot the points from the table, which will fit on the grid. So they're acknowledging that uh, this point and this point will not fit on the grid. Okay, um, and complete the sketch of y equals fg of x for x is an element of the reals. That x is an element of the reals, they're telling you that it's a connected straight line. So we would connect the points and put arrows on the end like the line shown. Okay, so again, just like lesson two, we are plotting this x value with this y value. So the first point we would be able to plot would be negative two, this x value, and comma 15, that y value. Okay, so I'm gonna plot those points. There's the first one, and you guys do that as well, and we'll check back and see if we have the same graph. Okay, so we have our points plotted, and you probably notice, as I did, that we don't actually have a straight line like we would have expected from the last lesson. We now have a line that's in the shape of a parabola. So draw the best fit line you can through those points. Um, hopefully you can do a little less wobbly like I did. Um, and let's look at the next question. So the functions f and g above are f of x equals 2x plus 1. Okay, and g of x equals x minus 3. Write a simplified expression for the function fg of x. Okay, so again, recalling that fg of x is the same as f of x times g of x, that's really what we're going to be doing then. We're going to be going f of x, which is 2x plus 1, that gets substituted in for f of x. And I'm putting brackets around it because we need to multiply by g of x. g of x, x minus 3, in brackets again. Okay, and they want simplified expression. So in this case, simplified means to expand it, collect any like terms. Since we have a binomial times a binomial, we will be using distributive property or a FOIL. So we multiply the first terms together the outside terms, okay, so first, outside, inside terms, and then finally the last terms. Okay, collect any like terms, and there we go, there is our simplified expression. Okay, part D, use a graph calculator to graph the function fg of x from part C and compare this graph with the graph from part B. Okay, so we are going to need our graphing calculators and we're gonna be putting this function here, 2x squared minus 5x minus three into our graphing calculator. So grab your calculator, I'll grab mine. Okay, so in y equals, we are going to put in 
2x squared, I believe it was. Okay, so 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Okay, and we're going to probably set our windows to zoom standard number 6. And there we go, there's our graph. Okay, so, gee, does that look like our graph? It does. Our vertex is down here in quadrant four. Our vertex over here is in quadrant four as well. It looks very similar to the graph that we have. Hmm. Okay, interesting to note. Back to our page. Okay, so we're done part D. Let's see what's next. Determine the domain and range of the function. Okay, so we're probably going to need to figure out our vertex, this lowest point on our parabola. Now our sketch may or may not be accurate, so we're going to use our graph from our graphing calculator to do that and get that vertex. What can we say about the domain so far though? We can probably say, since it's a parabola, it goes forever left and right, that our domain will be x such that x would be known in the real numbers, all real numbers. Okay, range y such that, now it's probably going to be y, okay, our parabola opens up, so that means y would be greater than or equal to some number we don't know, and then all real numbers because it's a continuous line. So we're going to go and take a look at our graph and calculator. Okay, so to find this vertex, it is the minimum point on this parabola. So we're going to go second, oh, trace, and we want minimum, number three. Okay, left bound means we need to be left of where we think this vertex is. We are left, we could be here as well. Okay, and then you hit enter. Right bound, we need to be right of where we think the vertex is. So we're going to cursor to the right. Somewhere in there, hit enter. For guess, go ahead and hit, hit enter. Okay, now for range, we're concerned with the lowest y value. And in this case, it looks like it's negative 6.125 right there. So we are going to copy that in for our range. y is greater than or equal to negative 6.125. And there we go. And then part F, calculate the value of F times G of 8 in two different ways. Okay, now we have actually found what F times G is. So if F times G of X is, move that up a little bit. If that is equal to, from part C above, 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, then if we want to figure out f times g of 8, we replace x with 8. So everywhere you see x in our function, we're going to scoop that out and put in an 8. Okay, off to the calculator, or you can simplify this in your head. 64 times 2, 128, minus 40, 88. Minus 3 is 85. Okay, now that's one way you could figure it out. The other way is to use our original functions. Okay, and find, so f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. g of x is equal to x minus 3. We could figure out the value of f when x is 8 by subbing in 8 for x and getting 17 and figure out g at 8, the value of the function when x is 8, sub in 8 for x, and we would get 5. Then, multiplying them together, we would get 85. Hey, same answer. Cool, so you can actually do that two different ways. Use the original or um, the simplified expression for the product. Whichever is easier, that's the way you want to go with, unless it's at, requested to do it a certain way. Okay, in this investigation, the product of two functions whose graphs are straight lines is a, we ended up with a parabola, so that would be called a quadratic function. 
Okay. Can you find two functions? We'll skip that one for the sake of time. Okay, let's go to the next page. Example number one. Consider the functions f of x equals 3 root x minus 2 and g of x equals root x minus 5. We're going to skip actually this one because we covered that in the last lesson. And we are going to look at f times g of x. Okay, so they want, notice it's of x. So we have to get the expression. Okay, so if you recall, that is the same as f of x times g of x. So we are going to substitute in for f of x, what f of x equals, 3 root x minus 2. Substitute in for g of x, what that is equal to, root x minus 5. And you'll notice it's at simplest, so they're going to want us to expand this. So we multiply again, binomial times binomial, so we FOIL 3 root x times root x. Now root x times root x, think of root 3 times root 3. That is root 9, which turns into 3. So essentially the root, the radical sign is, um, has disappeared, is the shortcut. So that's going to be 3x. Outside term, negative 5, so it's going to be negative Okay, 5 times 3 is 15, and the root x, there's no variable part to multiply that with, so it's just simply root x. Negative 2 times root x would simply be negative 2 root x. And finally, last terms, negative 2 times negative 5, positive 10. Okay, are there any like terms? Well, nothing to collect with the 3x or the 10, but these two terms are alike. So we, the radical part is identical, which it needs to be for them to be alike. Root x, root x, we're good there. So we simply add the coefficients. Negative 15 plus negative 2 is going to be negative, I'll get the 3x written down first, and then we have negative 17 root x, negative 15 and negative 2, plus 10. And there we go. That's our simplified form of the product of f and g. Okay, now, part B, it says evaluate, which means find the value of, or the number, right? Okay, so f times g at 49. We have a choice here. We could use our simplified form, or we could use the original. So whichever you would like to do, you can use. I'm going to try it with the simplified form, 3x minus 17 root x plus 10 is our f g of x function and we're trying to find f of x times sorry we're trying to find f g at 49 so in for x goes 49 and then we need to simplify that um, let's see, 3 times 49, 120, 27, 147, minus 17. The square root of 49 is 7, so that's going to be multiplied by the 17 on the next step. Okay, and then we should be able to put this in the calculator and get a final answer. Okay, so we arrived at 38 for the product at x equals 49. The other way we could have done that was to go f of x equals 3 root x minus 2, g of x equals root x minus 5, and evaluate each of those at 49, and g at 49 as well. Okay, and we would get 3 times 7 is 21, minus 2 is 19, and over here, 7 minus 5 is 2, Multiply 19 times 2 to get that product, and we get 38. Same answer. So you decide which one on, on those ones where you have to find the value of, which method is preferable. I am okay with either one. And that ends lesson 3. Um, on to lesson 4.